Alright, hello everyone, and welcome back to Journey Beyond the Abyss. So, I'll level with you. I took a day off. Like, I, I just had a day where I didn't play JBTA for once, and I've kind of forgot what I was doing. So, let's just examine what we're doing. It looks like we were just about to build an engineer's work table. Well, that is an easy enough ask. And it's also going to ask us for this engineer's blueprint, which the game is lagging out and not showing me the recipe. There we are. Yeah, so that's going to require a blank design pattern and a crafting table, as well as some creosote oil. That's easy enough. And that is going to require tons of lapis lazuli. That is maybe a bit more complicated. Let's get us some more creosote oil just while we're waiting. Eh, put this over here for now. I'm probably going to have to either expand the storage system or come up with something better. So... We need to find some lapis lazuli. That's what we're doing tonight. And I happen to know a relatively decent source. So, without further ado, let us make sure that we're wearing the tank, as well as our pretty pants, our, our nice armored pants. And let's just jump straight into the ocean. Yes. The easy way to find lapis lazuli, we found it a little bit just from, I, I think they might be from the fossil blocks. The fossil blocks give you a little bit of everything, I think. But the easier way is to go searching at the ocean's bottom for, they're quite distinctive, and they're usually a bit less, yes, there they are. There's one. Yes, yes, yes. These little geode arrangements from Railcraft, yes. Abyssal stone. So, we're just gonna crack this thing open. And it looks almost like there's... Ah, there's some monsters inside there, including a witch who has poisoned us, of course. Very polite. Yes, unfortunately this abyssal stone is unfamiliar to us. I'm not sure if it has any crafting uses. I know it does make lovely decor, though. But yes, with that geode flooded, we can kind of just mark it on our map for the moment. Swim away, despawn all the monsters in there. Yes, I know, I am playing it safe, I am playing it cowardly, but... Well, with two lives... Goodness, I'm getting some lag spikes. What is going on? But yes, with me only down to my last two lives, and having just wasted one, I really don't want to risk it. But yes, with that geode full of water, there shouldn't be any room for monsters to spawn inside there, so if we swim back we should find it a lot less populated. Yes, I'm not seeing any red dots. There we go. And let's just slam down a couple of torches. And it looks like there is no lapis in here. I'm getting a little bit of lag every time I'm opening my menu. What is going on? Really? No, not that time. Well, a little bit of diamond. Never hurt anyone. Now, let me... Do I have any uses for this stuff? No. No. Normally it can be chiseled into a bunch of different decorated blocks at the very least, I think, but I guess not this time. Well, on to the next one. But yes, those geodes have lapis lazuli, diamond, and emerald inside of them. So we can just find ourselves a nice little bit of lapis by cracking those open. And there they are. Yeah, they're relatively frequent things. It's no problem finding a bunch of these. And it's no big deal if one of them's empty. We'll find another one. And we'll just do our same trick. Just swim away a couple hundred blocks. Get it all nice and empty in there. Yes, there's lots of interesting things on the sea that are actually old shipwrecks and, and well, really, shipwrecks and geodes is kind of it, along with the usual gravel, sand, and clay. 
yeah, there's not that many interesting things at the ocean bottom. I guess there's the creep vine, whatever. And this one looks to be a complete thud. Like if we break it open a little bit further, just kind of hollow this thing out completely. See if there's anything at all in here. No, I'm I'm not seeing it. Ah, a little bit of lapis. Yes, huzzah! I probably should have done this on the last one, but it was a smaller one. It didn't have much that was unknown to us. And we were going to need, what, 12 of this? Goodness. Goodness, game. What is the matter? You okay? Hmm. I'll, I'll try playing with some settings and things after tonight's episode. I'll see if I can figure out what's what with that. Did I manage to avoid anything spawning in this one? Looks like. Now let's just dig out the sides. Make sure that this one is, in fact, completely empty. And it looks like it is. Well, we have another one to try right here. I could have sworn I saw something blue float up in my inventory. Maybe it was some more diamonds. Right. Getting some bad luck. Lapis should be the most common gem in these things, I think. not getting it. We are not getting lucky. And we are getting a lag spike every single time I open my menu. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, you know what? Hold on a sec. Let me get to dry land. And I will reboot JPTA real quick. I will try changing around a few settings, and I will see if that helps. Yeah, let's get back to base. And let's also, while we're back at base, let's look at how much Lapis we already have. Let's see how much we need to hunt. That would be a helpful thing to know. Sorry, I, I'm just kind of worried now. Ah, yes. Our garlic patch is ready to harvest. Lovely, lovely. Garlic is a unique plant from uh, bionization. And it provides no hunger, no satiation. But it does provide you with bionization's immunity. And what immunity does is it makes it harder for you to catch diseases. And if you do catch them, they go away faster. So, I don't think immunity falls un over time. I think that immunity goes down every time you catch a disease. Or every time a disease attempts to be caught, or something like that. In any case... Yeah, look at that. Not even just my own inventory. Every single inventory is lagging when I try and open it. That's not good. All right, I will be right back after I reboot JBTA. Okay, let's give this uh, a take two. 
Sorry about that, everyone. And... Hopefully... Hopefully... Wait, hold on. Yes. Sorry about that. that. was just making sure that OBS was recording. Hopefully. Well, no, it's still getting a lag spike when I try and open this. Hmm. A really long lag spike. What's going on? Well, hmm. I guess we'll just deal with it for the moment. And we'll hope that it clears up. I will... Yeah, I'll continue filming for tonight. In between episodes, I will examine all my options and see if I can figure out what has changed and what's going wrong. But anyway... Just pick up all the straw. Cycle the tar bells. It's not terribly important. But I would like to maybe get a little bit more coal tar into the tannery. Before I start emptying all my coal into the... Into the, uh... Into the coke oven. Yeah. Let's get one coal block just so we don't forget. And let's go ahead and put... I think this can also take wood and turn it straight into charcoal. Albeit very slowly. But still. In any case, let's go... Let's sleep through the night. And then let's go... Uh, let's see, I was searching the north last time, so let's search east. Just so I'm less likely to run into... Uh, into geodes that I've already cracked. And let's keep on searching for that lapis. Yep. It's not a very exciting mining expedition, but it is something to do. And we hopefully won't need to do this for too terribly long. I don't think we need very many of these blueprints. Like, the one we're making might be enough, technically. I think we might need another one. Okay, just swim away. Let everything in there go away and stop bothering us. Swim back. And hope that we have a nice clean geode. It's a looking like it. And it's looking like this one has nice amounts of tasty, tapey, tasty, tasty lapis lazuli. Oh boy, lag spec when I'm looking in my inventory. Yep. But that is enough lapis for now. Which is good, good news. So let's get rid of that temporary marker we made. And let's head back to base and get this processed and crafted and turned into quest progress. Yes. It's worrying me that some sort of technical issue is popping up now. That's... That's bad juju. And it's predictable, too. It's every time I'm opening my menu after not opening it for a little while, like... I can do this all day, but if I leave it for a minute, then it shall come up and tell me that it's uh, feeling neglected, I guess. In any case, uh, we, we're done with our designer's workshop. We're working on an engineer's blueprint. And for that, we need this blank design pattern. That's what we're after. So we need a bunch of paper. It's been a while since I made paper been a while since I used paper. Let's just get this off the tables for now. Again, the tar bales aren't a huge deal. And get some more on there. I probably have enough paper in storage. It's just, now that I'm finally using a little bit of it, let's craft a little bit of it, you know? Just a nice general philosophy right there. Yeah, I have way more than enough. So, and that's all it takes. Now I'm going to need the artisan's tools. 
So, artisan pencil, artisan compass, and artisan T square. Stupid. There. Anything special in these? Not in particular. So I'm going to need three, nine, ten tool rods in total. Nice and cheap and relatively merciful. Let's just grab that. Grab a load of diamonds. And let's get them crafted. Oh, some boards. Any more? Oh, and this piece of coal. Good thing we checked. One and a two and a three and a done. And that is our designer work table workshop all filled out. Make us a blank pattern. And what can we use this for? Six different recipes. Probably for six different blueprints. Yep, projectiles, arc furnace electrodes, specialized projectiles, and something unfamiliar, which is going to require a ton of them. So eventually we're going to need stacks and stacks of lapis, but hopefully that point will come after we're capable of attaining it more easily. Hopefully. It doesn't always happen that way, but hopefully. Alright, so we need a crafting table. That is just easy as you please. -y. And one of these. The venerable crafting axe. And there we go. Next, we're going to need 11 of these. Five of these. No. Yeah, four of those. Four of those. And one of those. And doop, 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 doop. And we're just about done. And seven of those. Crafting table. Nice pile of wood chips to celebrate our victory. Really should probably start pulping all those. Except we have tons of pulp already. I guess I'll start pulping them the moment that uh, our pulp starts running out. Just so that I'm not scrabbling for storage space, which is at a premium right now. And let's craft this one up. You know... Do I have access to igniters? I do. They aren't even that hard to craft. Hmm. Ten redstone. And what else? Uh, six of those bricks. And where's the bars? I should have kept the rest of the iron bars if I didn't use them all. I... Oh yeah, you only get one of them in this. Well, that's still not a hard craft. Hold on, we're, we're doing a little bit of impromptu science here. There. And then if I do this on this... Ah, oh, redstone block. Right, right, right. There we go. Yeah, if I get myself a stone igniter, and I put that, like, right yeah, for now. No, wait, the red side is... No, the red side is the signal side, and that side is the igniter side, right? So I want the little dot facing that way. And then I go ahead and I give it a signal... Just like this. Will that... It will! 
All right, with a little bit of work, I technically won't need my fire starter for much of anything anymore. Because, yes, I can put a refractory version of that up on the pit burner, too. Oh, why not? It's fun. It's good old fashioned decadence, and that's been one of our that's been one of our uh, special secret words. So why not? And one more. Just get another one going. And let's see if we can sneak this one. Mm. Does the redstone signal have to be on that side? I guess it do. Ah, right, I need some sort of a slabby thing to put on that one. Just to avoid the wood chip problem. Yes. just for right now. Maybe I'll put a stone block on there so it looks better, but it, it doesn't really matter. But yes. So could I maybe put the igniter down on this block and put a lever on the side? But let's test if it can accept signal from any side first. So if I put, I don't know, um, some cobble sure in there then no it won't okay so it does need to actually hit the activator side will it accept redstone dust like like if I clear out the water down there a little bit Need some more blocks. Just make a little dry spot down there. And then, like, put a spot of redstone dust underneath there. Oh, wait, it needs to be that one. Well, it doesn't matter anyway. Yeah. And then build myself a igniter. And yes, I'm kind of blasting through my redstone, but it's fine. We're, we're, we'll find a nicer source of it pretty soon. Okay. And then I need, right, 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 six iron, smack some iron. Duh. Hopefully these things last a good long time. Yeah, got a good couple of operations in on them without seeing any damage so far. Always a good sign. Okay. Igniter. Okay, so if I then... No, not like that. Can I make any sort of wrench? No, not yet. Okay, so I guess I need to go one block deeper. Duh. No. Is this thing incapable of facing up? Like, if I get straight under it. This thing is incapable of facing up. Shoot. Oh, double shoot. Stupid aqua dynamic. Making my mining speed so fast. Hello. Hello, like spike. Okay. Well, I think the answer is that the igniter ain't just going to work on this one. Which is a pity. 
but that's life for you. Where is Celtic? There we go. At least we fixed a little bit of a, a little bit of a design, a hole in our pattern there. Oh well. We still have these things activating on a button press. That's a bit of luxury for us. Oh. The igniter keeps it on. That is potentially something I don't like. Would a refractory igniter have a different behavior? It doesn't particularly matter. We just need to know to flip that one off when it's done. And yeah, it's it's fine. That does mean that the sawmill will be forced to... St well, it doesn't matter because we've automated it. Yep. Yeah. Unfortunately, this thing, all its operational size... And I don't want to take this side up with the igniter because that side is the fuel input. Oh, well. A little bit of luxury was obtained. Just a little bit of extra frivolity. We need to do a few unnecessary things in a day, I think. And this was a little bit of live science, too, you know? Let's cook some lava while we're in the area. Just as an apology to this thing for disrupting its life so. There you go. And right, 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 right. We need to just take this and this, and we get an engineer's blueprint. Easy as that. Get out of there. Get in there. And next up, we need this engineer's workbench, which is going to take some tarred planks, tarred boards. Oh, at least it doesn't need treated wood. Do we have a recipe for treated wood yet? No, we don't. Which is probably why it doesn't need it. So... We are going to need four, eight, nine tarred planks. Let's just see how big of a set of tarred planks do we make at a time. I'm going to take a full stack of wood. Looks like we make eight at a time. Which is about as expected, really. That's fairly typical. So we'll make a bit more than we need. And we're running low on board, so let's keep on processing this wood down. Just kind of run on down the list. How's that doing? Huh. So if I turn the igniter off... There we go. Yep, that's running just as we please. It is a very minor convenience that I have crafted for myself, but it is a convenience nonetheless. And nothing's in the pit burner right now. Let's fix that. Yep, it's still got a little bit of derp in there. And we don't have enough for the... So let's just do a standard. Let's generate a little bit more wood tar. That's a nice solution when we're trying to get rid of our wood tar. Get these two infected ones. Fire shall cleanse them. And I'm not really super trying to get rid of my wood tar anyway. It's more like... If I if I really need the coal tar, which I don't think I even do, but if I need it, then it'll it'll be just a matter of clearing the thing manually, being a little bit wasteful. There's where I'm keeping the stuff. Um, ah, there it is. Tar plank set one. I suppose that while I'm waiting on tarred sets plank, tarred planks set 
two, I could start making on something to help me get into the abyss. Because we are getting close to that point. So how about I make myself a uh, proper weapon? That sounds like a plan. So I'm going to make myself a bow. Bow limb pattern. And give myself a little bit of cobble. Material cost on that was four, right? Uh, three. Oh well. Yes. And after a little bit of testing in in creative mode, I've determined that the best material to make a bow out of that I have available to me right now is in fact piggy iron. Yes. If I search up my bow limbs, then you'll find that pig iron has a pretty low draw speed, uh, middling uh, range multiplier, and a very high bonus damage. I have something to help me get around the range multiplier, so all I really care about is draw speed and bonus damage. And most other things, like they'll have Night Slime is horrible for bows. Uh, slime has a low draw speed, but no... Well, I can't get slime anyway. Wood is your baseline with one and one and really low durability. Stone is crap. Cactus is... Eh, it's, it's about on par with wood, just has more durability. Yep. We... The stats really aren't great. Probably our next best bet would be, uh, not hard carbon. Where is steel? Silver. Silver is decent. Just really low range and low bonus damage. Yeah, there's steel, which has more bonus damage and more range, but has a higher draw speed. And I will prefer rapid fire over single really damaging shots. That's just my personal preference. No, a little bit of gold to make us a cast, too. So, a nice pink... Piggy Iron Bow for us. We're also going to need to make some arrows. So, I need an arrow shaft. I need an arrow head. And I need a fletching. The arrow shaft, I have something special in mind. You might remember a long time ago when we raided the Jailmaster's place. We picked up these end rods. Yeah. They can be used to make a special arrow shaft. Now, it's not a really great arrow shaft in terms of how much ammunition it gives you. It has a low durability modifier and a low bonus ammo. If we look at these shafts that you can get, um, bone will give you a much better amount. Blaze rod, ice, ice arrows, huh? Yeah. Really, end rods give you the worst durability. But they have this special ability, end speed. And that is a really nice ability. It is worth the price we are paying for it. So, let's get our bow together. And is it daytime outside? It's looking like it is. Let us go to the chicken farm and buy some feathers to make a fletching. Um, there are other fletchings available. We could make leaf. We could go to the. Uh, we could go to a certain secret place to get slime leaf. But while those other fletchings give us more durability, they have a accuracy malice. Feathers will give you only baseline durability, but they will give you 100% accuracy. Which isn't actually 100%. I've seen some shots wander, but... Well, they at least won't be further denigrating our skills than they already are. We need all the help we can get. Let's just buy a ton. Buy a ton, I mean, whatever I get by right-clicking, which turned out to be eight. Uh, I guess while we're passing through town, let's check by the town center. See if they need anything. See if they have any windows for us to flip. See if it's time for us to finally get a life. Yes, the village is quite lively today. Hmm. 
Iron bar windows. I didn't notice that. Ah, they're after some more banners to upgrade the fort. Well, that's high priority. Sure, I'll help you upgrade the fort again. And you even have some windows to pay me with. How lovely. I appreciate it. You just have fun with those. And look at that. Look at that. Yep. This is why I'm saying it's time to prepare to go to the Abyss. Because, uh, because I'll finally have the nice buffer lives to do it properly. And that's why it's nice to get our preparations done right now. So... Take my money out. Yep, yep. And I believe you are the man that I need to talk to. Yes, you are. I'm slightly less mortal. Huzzah! Always a wonderful feeling. In any case... By now, our bow should be finished cooking, as well as our tarred planks. Let's get the tarred boards on the cooker. I need more boards than this. I have more boards than this. Why am I only... I thought the... Uh... Hold on. I think it's related to the saw blade. Yeah, if I go into uses on the refractory ta sawmill... Yeah. So diamond does three. Does obsidian only do two? It does. Okay, so that's something to note. Obsidian has more durability, but diamond will get you more products. Hmm. I am overheating myself wearing my wetsuit indoors. So that is something... I really don't like that I overheat. Well, we're stuck with this diamond blade for now. Anyway. Or obsidian blade, I should say. How much more durability does it have left? Not that much. We're stuck with it for a little while longer. So let's just uh, let it live out its life. Anyway, yes, I need arrowhead. And the best arrowhead... Uh, uh, material right now is probably steel for damage. Yeah, that's attack 6. But I am not going to go with steel because we have two things on the arrow that are denying it uh, durability, and durability is how much ammunition you have. So I'm going to take a hit of one attack in exchange for having roughly double the durability. So, uh, yeah... I am going to make hard diamond for my arrowhead. Let's just grab a ton. I need to repair some tools. So, da, 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 arrowhead. Make myself a cast. It's just two. And let's repair our tools up some. Huh, I was expecting the hammer to take two. Let's repair the pickaxe too. There we go. And I need two gold for another cast. All right. Deep. Ah, lovely. Nice little baconlicious tasty bowheads. Beauteous. All right, and... That'll take a moment to melt. All oh, right, that is unfamiliar to us. At least it's an opportunity for me to restock our redstone a little bit. And I'm also going to need a bow string. It is time for more boards. And they go in there, yes. Adjusting to the new situation there. Uh, da, da, da. Right, bowstring. That just uses one material, doesn't it? I vaguely remember that being the case now. Where is 
is the bowstring. There it is. So, I'm making just a short bow. Because, again, I favor, I favor draw speed over uh, hit. And it, it has okay durability. But really, what's nice about it is it just does lots of bonus damage. It has a decent range. And it shoots fast. So, thank you, Mr. Bow. You've done wonderful work for us, but you've been replaced. Next, our fletching. Very distinctively shaped. Just a nice feather fletching. Modifier 1, accuracy 100. Yep. Other fletchings are technically attainable, but uh, yeah, they would give us a bit more... I suppose slime leaf would be acceptable. Maybe maybe if I ever do a adventure into the place where I can get slime leaf, I'll replace the fletching. And arrowhead. And finally, I am going to want a little bit of moss on these arrows. Because ammunition is the one important thing that you want to be able to regenerate in the field. And the good news is that with my copper tool rod tools, which generate little balls of experience, Mending Moss is going to be a very powerful modifier. What is going on? That's better. You just behave yourself, Mr. Bucket. You ain't a stone bucket, so your shenanigans ain't costing me anything. I can do this all day if I have to. And I would even time-lapse it for the crowd so I wouldn't feel bad about it. Yes. Let's play JBT. Let's stream JBTA, he says. Yes, stream. Let's do it without any editing, he says. He says. Yeah. That's just the best laid plan. The best laid plans of mice and men, I suppose. In any case, end rod, feather fletching, hard carbon head. That would give us 70 ammunition. With steel, we would only have about maybe uh, 50. So it gives us a nice stack-ish of ammunition, and it is lightweight, which I don't think has any effect on the arrowhead. It is sharp, which means it causes a slight damage over time, and it has end speed, which means the arrow is hit scan and flies dead straight within the... Uh, Within the range of the bow itself, which 1.4 is a pretty far range, this thing flies dead straight and teleports to target. So yes, I have myself a lovely sniper bow. In any case, we're getting some mending moss together. If the cobble will behave itself. First step is just getting a ton of moss stone. And that is just going to also require a ton of glue. Unfortunate, but it is what it is. Do we have any little balls of refractory clay? No, we don't. So let's start mixing some more refractory, just in order to turn it all into glue. And we have the now ultra-decadent system over here. And as soon as it's run through, we just need to turn it off. Yep. A bit unfortunate that I need to actually manually turn it off. Oh, it isn't done yet. One more. Now it's done. Wow, that many losses? Really unlucky batch. Doesn't particularly matter when we're doing it in this system, though. And I'm going to need some flint. Thankfully, I have a goodly supply of it. Ah, yes, and this is another one that I can't make 
uh, ultra convenient, ultra decadent, because again, it's it's this fountain setup. It's just not friendly with. Oh, I already had some slaked lime in here. Oh well. So that's four stacks of that. And you know, I was just saying that we need to get rid of some of our pulp. So... That's three stacks. And then we can just take all of these. And look at that, we've got tons more pulp. Yep. Definitely not regretting placing these right next to the water source. It is definitely the move to go for. And now we just need a stack of slime, which, oh, would you look at that? We happen to have one handy. <laughs> I love my blood bank. So yeah, this is something you don't see very often. Crafting glue by the stack. If I can find the dang recipe, there it is. <sighs> and still not enough water. Well, we're nearing the point where we can never have to do this again, too. It is so close to full industrialization. I can feel it calling to me, pulling me forward. So yeah, I think we're gonna be good on glue. And we're even gonna be really good on pulp for a little while. Simply because of all of our shenanigans with the sawmill and right what did i need these tarred things for uh the uh engineer the engineer's workbench yes that's what i need them for oh look a little bit of glue well i wonder if we can afford it and it just needs a crafting station Thank you for not making me make a, another workstation. It was getting dull. It was getting predictable, you know? This is a bit less of a... A bit less of a slog to go through. I mean, you know I have the resources to pull it. Right, it's... Now, that, and finally, into blah. There we go. And there we go. And this needs to be crafted in the engineers. There we are. Now, the engineer's workbench is, of course, the immersive engineering workbench. And it has a little bit of an interesting feature where... A, it's a multi-block, and B, it's useless until you put a blueprint on it. And now it can make these recipes. Which, I'm surprised, aren't the next immediate thing it's asking us to make. But I guess we're just a little bit lucky. So. Well. All right, mending moss. We have a mending moss project going on. Oh goodness, this stuff is chuffy. Well, we have an answer for you. Just hang out in there and think of, of Losing some weight, Moss Stone. Alright, so. Moss. Mending Moss is Ball of Moss. Ball of Moss is 
Uh, well, we have enough. But more importantly, it is four more diamonds and it is some grass blocks. That's going to be a little bit of an interesting thing to obtain. Let me just use my amulet because, yeah, it's, it's nighttime out, right? Right. Not anymore. No reason for us to put up with the animation every time, I guess. So let me go to some place where it's a bit more inobtrusive, like our Sunwell mine. And I wonder, if I silk touch the grass with my pickaxe, no. With my shovel? Kind of. Kind of. Okay, so I'm getting... I'm getting these grass chunks out of it, and I am getting the dirt blocks back that I can just place down. And I think these things, yeah. Okay, so that's how we'll get our hands on some grass. We don't need to go down a back alley and contact a shady guy or anything. And we just need the one. Real nice and easy. Really need a pressure plate for that door. And where was this made? At a basic workshop with water. Oh, right, the moss stone. Need to take that out of hammer space. There we go. And uh, you just, you just sit in the chef, you 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 just sit in the corner and consider the fact that I'm going to put you on a diet. So that means eight, twelve, twelve glue. Honestly, not that bad. And that's done in another basic workshop. Just like so. That gives us our special glowing mending moss that we can then take our arrows and just put them right on there. And what mending moss will do is, so long as we are holding the arrow in our hotbar or in our hand, if I go and I start mining up, say, I don't know, some sand over in the water with my nice little shovel to generate some XP orbs. Then keep a close eye on my level. You'll notice it's not rising, even though I'm absorbing XP orbs. That's because if I will wear the dang tank when I go in the dang water, that's because it's being absorbed into the carbon arrows and they've already repaired themselves. Yes, these things have a little tank that'll store up a little bit of XP, and they will use that XP to repair themselves. So let's just get them fully stocked. I don't think they need to be held in your hand, but they do need to be held somewhere in your hotbar, and my offhand works fine for that. I suppose if we're mining, we might as well set up some filters so that we're mining more reasonably. There. Yep, and I'm just going to go until I see my own XP start to rise, which will mean that the tank on the arrows is full. And storing up this amount of XP should be enough to, for it to generate quite a lot of ammo of ammo over time. When we start to run low on ammo, all we've got to do is put our arrows in our hotbar and they should repair themselves fairly quickly. Honestly, these things are storing up a lot more than I expected. Ah, there we go. All right. So, now we have a nice, better weapon. We have some nice, better armor. We have a nice, better tank. And we have a nice, better live count. That kind of didn't work with the sentence. But 
I'm seeing nothing that is making me hesitate on taking a trip to the Abyss. So I will just be evil and leave you all on a cliffhanger and make you all hate me and say that next time we will be journeying beyond the Abyss. I'll see you then.